Okay. 1.64. So it's a good size round tube. It's not, it's not a little header. And uh, of course, just like any header, it could use some work on the flange itself. I mean, any header that I've ever come across needed work before you put it on, just like, just like anything else. Okay, guys, this is the port we used. As you can see, okay, when they weld it, they put a big bead around it, and it does block off the port quite a bit. Now, of course, these ports are bigger than the ports that I have on the head. Why don't we measure them and compare? Okay. This is what the port is. And let's just go to the top here, right? Something like that is what we... So so this is not going to be really affecting it. Obviously, these are probably 360 or 340 size headers. So the smaller port, and I kept it a smaller port. I mean, it's a little bigger than stock, but not much. Because I like a small, fast exhaust port. But, uh, you know, we're getting decent flows out of that port. Uh, in fact, I think with a pipe, this port with a pipe, oh, well, why don't we just look at the flows? Why not? Okay, now let's just take a look. Okay, this test was cylinder number eight. This was the exhaust, right? At 600, we topped out at 170.7. The, rec the uh, trapezoid port actually topped out a touch better there, but all right, this is actually better here. Let's do some pluses and minuses between those two, because I I thought I had it the other way around. I thought the, the trapezoid port wasn't as good. But I did do work to them since that, because they were a lot lower. And then I did some work to them. So this is actually the first trapezoid port I've flowed since I've done work to them. Okay. Trapezoid port. Rectangular port. Pluses and minuses are in reference to these. Plus, 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 plus one minus at the bottom. And we got some, we got some good size gains. So obviously I figured out uh, how to catch up the trapezoid port quite a bit. Uh, it actually, it took a lot of work on the throat and the short side because the, the trapezoid port has got that angled short side which is difficult to work on but obviously I figured it out because that's not bad and we're 188 with a pipe now yeah I think we were maybe 180 on uh, the number one so they were still pretty close in any case let's move on to what our horrendous ported intake manifold did Okay, so we were flowed out of this one right here. Okay, now look at it. It's it's wide open on this side, right? So it's got very little restriction right here. Yeah, this bulge makes it move over a little bit, but then it goes right down the center and out. So you start to look at it and you're like, that's really not bad. In fact, I thought it would have it would have kind of evened out the way I, I thought I had it with these were a little bit better ports. And these were a little bit worse because they have a little bit longer travel path before they get to freedom, right? So, did I screw it up? I don't think so. I would think at this point, anything anything right around those numbers are good. Now, when I originally did the E7TEs for DV, he's like, Charlie, if you can come near 160 on that exhaust port, I'll be thrilled. I'll end up getting them. I think the ones that I sent up to him were like 165, but a later interpretation of the E7s, I got them like over 180. You put a pipe on them and they come damn close to 200. Because it's a learning curve, guys. They should get a little better each time, you know? So this is what our numbers look like through the ported manifold. Yeah, of course you have losses. But that's a gain. How do you get a gain? How do you get a gain? It didn't even make any sense. I did it twice. Now, I'm not going to say it's a perfect test. It was not a perfect test. It was a pain in the neck. 
because I had to fiddle with clay and all kinds of crap to make it even flow air through without leaks and stuff. Is it a perfect test? No. But it tells me enough that we're not completely strangled with these manifolds. Now, of course, as soon as we add a pipe to that, it's going to change. Okay? And you're going to need a pipe to exit the dyno. I know that. Now, <laughs> the really surprising part is we'll take this number and we'll go heads up against the header. And as I already showed you, the ported manifold beats the header. Who would have thought? Certainly not me. But somebody made a, a comment not too long about wasting your time with manifolds. And I, I wrote back, it's like, I ran ported manifolds for a long time, and they really weren't bad. When I finally put a set of headers on, true, they were short. They were short, shorty headers. They're not as good as long tubes. But there was almost no difference in performance. And I was like, how is that possible? Well, it's possible. All right, guys. So these are in reference to these. I'm going to put pluses and minuses on these. I know. I know. I was scratching my head, too. And I will give you my theory on what's going on. I mean, it's funny. Here, you got 29.5. Now, now remember, I had to... I had to remove my selector. So, I was stuck on range 4. Okay? Now, range 4 at 0.05 lift... Didn't give me enough flow to even register on 4. Okay? All right. Moving down, almost the same, but minus, minus, minus. We have minuses everywhere, the whole thing. How can the header not flow as well as a, a ported manifold? That's impossible. Okay, so what I came up with, and it was funny because I was talking to my, my TPI customer today, and we were discussing uh, a few things about that, that, that plan. It's going to be really cool, I guarantee you guys. You'll love it. It's going to be... As it stands right now, if he can get the parts, which has been a, a real pain, he just got his Lingfelter, Lingenfelter cam, which is which is a nice cam actually. I think it's 220, 220 at 50, and it's like 0.56 with a 1.6 rocker. Okay, the lobe center is set so the computer won't have a fit. I think that'll work. The heads, small port vortex. We're going to try to stick to the stock size valves. Uh, he's, I think he's getting a Scoggin Dickey base. He told me the name of the runners, but they were good runners. They flow like 260, which is way better than the SLPs that I've had. And uh, he's got two plenums for me, so if I screw one up, it's not a big deal. And probably something like a 1,000 CFM uh, throttle body. Okay, in any case, we were talking about that and, you know, how it just doesn't quite pay to spin it above 6,000 with those long runners. There's just too much of a resistance, even if you get them flowing well. And he's running it on a stock short block with the cast piston. So, you know what, 6,000, probably a good number for mostly stock stuff. Unbelievable. Never get a break. Okay, so what I think is going on is the long tubes are adding enough resistance because we only have one PSI to get a loss on everything. But it did, I did feel pretty good about, about this and this, you know. The bare head to this, not a bad drop. You know, 10 CFM, I can live with that. That's not bad. <laughs> you know... The other thing you need to put into the equation is, remember, this flows 188 with a pipe, right? So if it had a straight, the pipe looks like this. Let's see if I can get you guys to see down there. It may, may be difficult. Okay, that's the size of my pipe. Now, <laughs> uh, so you can move this pipe around, and that's usually what I do, because... 
usually something like this flows about the best, right? Because the higher speed air is on the top, and the way the, the tube is, it helps, it helps the flow quite a bit, okay? Some of them like it a little bit more towards the bottom. Most of them, I believe, like, like, like it like this. Okay, so this is the size tube we're running. And you need a, this size tube to even cover the rectangular ports because they're taller. Now, we gain almost 17 CFM from the pipe. And a lot of guys say, you know, the pipe just skews the numbers. It just gives you an idea of what happens. Well, it's not quite a pipe, but it does give the air something to follow, right, on, on this side and this side. This is all open under here. So that probably gives you a few CFM. And then, of course, you have the resistance of, the, of going down the, uh, the branch to the outlet. So, where am I going? I don't know. I'm burnt out already, guys. It's, what is it, Thursday? Yeah. By, by the time Thursday comes around, I'm toast. Uh, I'm going to give... I already talked to DV on the phone for a few minutes. We have to talk tonight. Um, he's not sure it's the, the seminar is going to happen. I'm going to try my best to talk him into it. Carla got held up with some production stuff she's doing whether she's making a video or a film or whatever she's doing. She, she doesn't have time to even talk to me on the phone, but she said she will be here Monday. So we're not even going to get on the road till Monday. So that gives me a couple days to finish and cleaning some stuff up. I want to wash all these heads. I want to give them a squirt of WD-40. I don't want to show up there with dirty dirty stuff that's, that's rusty. So I will be working on that this weekend. I also need to spend almost a whole day each one doing the IOP program for the Mission Impossible and the Nine Degree. I don't think I've done either one of those. I know I did the 302 head. I, I, I don't know. I feel like I did, I did the Nine Degree already. Oh my god, wifey's in and out of the garage door. She's poking a little head in, which means it's time to go inside, guys. She probably wants to watch something on TV, and I'm good with that. So, it will happen. Um, I will tell you, if I'm able to talk DV into doing the seminar, he was complaining he has too much work to do. Well, I can go down there. If I get there Monday night, Tuesday, Wednesday, I can certainly set everything up that needs to be set up, and I can give him a hand on whatever work he's, he's behind in. And uh, I'll see if I can make that fly. If not the whole thing's off and I'm, I'm sorry that I even brought it up but we're going to try all right guys if he wants me thanks for hanging out have a good night